Harvard University's grand lecture hall buzzed with anticipation. Students in polished shoes and crisp coats sat upright, their attention fixed on the visiting professor, Dr. Caldwell, a renowned mathematician known more for his arrogance than his humility. Among the crowd stood Emma Carter, dressed plainly, her brown hair tied in a loose braid, clutching a worn notebook. She wasn't a student. She was the janitor's daughter, brought in by her father to help clean up after a special university event. While waiting in the corner for the lecture to end, she couldn't help but listen in on the professor's words. Dr. Caldwell wrote a near-impossible equation on the board. This problem has stumped top minds, he declared with a smirk. If anyone here can solve it, I'll personally recommend them for a fellowship. The students chuckled nervously. No one moved. Emma, staring at the chalkboard, whispered, That's just a misapplied theorem. Unfortunately, her whisper reached the ears of a nearby student, and moments later laughter erupted. Did the janitor's daughter just correct the professor? Dr. Caldwell turned sharply. Young lady, did you have something to say? His tone dripped with sarcasm. Emma hesitated. I, I just noticed an error in the equation. The professor scoffed. Oh, really? Would you like to take a shot at solving it, Miss... Carter, Emma Carter? Ah, of course. Well, Miss Carter, he said, gesturing mockingly to the board, why don't you enlighten the room? The crowd chuckled. A few even pulled out phones to record the humiliation they expected. Emma took a breath and stepped up. The chalk trembled slightly in her hand, but as she began to write, her movements became steady, confident. Line by line, she rewrote the problem, correcting the faulty logic and applying an advanced yet elegant method not even taught at undergraduate level. As the symbols flowed across the board, the laughter died down. The room fell completely silent. Dr. Caldwell's smirk slowly faded. When she finished, Emma turned around. That's the answer. And the theorem you were referencing actually only applies when the function is constrained. Yours wasn't. No one spoke. Her father, quietly watching from the back, looked stunned and proud. Dr. Caldwell stared at the board, speechless. For once, the man known for never being wrong had no comeback. And Emma, she simply returned the chalk and whispered, You asked. The lecture hall remained frozen in silence. A few students looked at each other, wide-eyed, as if they had just witnessed a glitch in reality. Dr. Caldwell, Harvard's proud, unchallenged intellect, stood paralyzed, staring at the blackboard where Emma Carter had just unraveled a problem that had confounded scholars for years. Emma quietly stepped away from the board and reached for her father's cleaning supplies. Come on, Dad, she whispered, but before they could leave, a voice cut through the silence. Wait, Dr. Caldwell's voice was no longer mocking. It was shaken, almost reverent. Miss Carter, where did you learn to do that? Emma turned. Books, online lectures, solving problems at night when my dad worked. I didn't go to college, couldn't afford it. A young professor near the front spoke up. But that method, your solution, it's not even published yet. How did you? I just followed the logic, she replied simply. The room buzzed again, this time not with mockery, but with astonishment. Students who had laughed at her were now murmuring in admiration, phones still in their hands. They weren't recording a failure anymore, they were recording history. An older gentleman in a suit entered quietly through the side door. It was Dean Willis, head of Harvard's mathematics department. He had been alerted by a text from one of the stunned TAs. I saw the footage, he said calmly. Miss Carter, is it true you're not a student? No, sir, she replied. I clean the halls with my dad. I just love numbers. Dean Willis nodded thoughtfully. Then he turned to Dr. Caldwell, who looked utterly deflated. Would you agree she just solved the problem you called impossible? Dr. Caldwell hesitated, then humbled he nodded. Yes, she did, perfectly. The dean approached Emma. Then I'd like to offer you a full scholarship starting today. We'll fast track you through placement exams. With your talent, you belong here more than most. Emma blinked, stunned. Her father's mop nearly fell from his hands. You're offering me a place at Harvard? She asked, her voice shaking. You earned it, the dean said. 
Tears welled in her eyes, and she turned to her father, who smiled proudly through his own tears. I told you, sweetheart, one day the world would see what I've always known. The room erupted into applause. Emma Carter, once mocked as the janitor's daughter, had just rewritten her future on a chalkboard in front of Harvard's finest. And for the first time in her life, she felt seen not for what she wore or where she came from, but for the brilliance she carried quietly inside her all along.